and welcome to week two of the Keystone Literature Summer Course. Now in week two, unit two, you're going to take a look at author's purpose. In other words, why did the author write this? Now some people will tell you that author's purpose is impossible to understand. We can never know what's in their head. Others will tell you that the author's purpose is irrelevant. It's all on what you think. And while they have some validity there, author's purpose can make a big difference because you need to know what you are supposed to do as you read. So why do authors write in the first place? Well, there's typically three, maybe four reasons. Sometimes it's to entertain us. Think about Harry Potter or any novels you read or children's stories. Uh, sometimes it's to instruct us. Maybe you're reading some instructions. Maybe you're learning how to do something. Maybe you're reading Wikipedia or something online. Sometimes it's simple description. What are we seeing? What are we looking at? And sometimes it's to persuade us. Now sometimes authors get tricky. They make it seem like they're informing you, but they're really persuading you. Sometimes they make it seem like they're entertaining you, but they're really informing you. So it's sometimes tough to read in between the lines. Now, entertainment, as I said, typically these are novels or short stories. They're designed to tell you something. Um, oftentimes they're there to make money. They're there to bring you in. They're there just to demonstrate the skills of the author, maybe just for attention. A lot of the stories that you have read have all been to entertain. Now they might have some great wonderful meanings to them, but the primary purpose is to entertain you. Now information, that's a little bit different. We read newspapers or online uh, articles about the news source. Um, these are designed to inform you. Now this can be a bit tricky because anytime you read something online that is supposed to inform you, you have to ask yourself is there a bias? We see this a lot in politics. Is the author writing for the Republican Party or the Democrat Party? Or is the author just trying to tell you what happened? You might see this in sports. Is the author trying to tell you what happened in the game of the Pirates versus the Dodgers? Or are they trying to show you why the Pirates are great and the Dodgers are terrible? Sometimes you need to look in between the lines to figure that out. A safe way though, as it says here, news, textbooks, brochures, these are almost always to inform you. Now persuasion is a little bit different. Now in 10th grade you should have learned about persuasion. Think about Julius Caesar and the different ways that Brutus and Anthony used to persuade the people. Persuasion happens in three ways. The first is logos, by using logic. In other words, you should listen to me because it logically makes sense. Perhaps I have facts and numbers to back up my point. The second one is pathos. This is where you try to use emotions in order to get people to do what you want. You should listen to me because everybody else is doing it. You should ignore him because he is kind of ugly looking. You should buy one so you can get one free, even though you really don't need either of them. Pathos appeals to your emotions to convince others. And finally, there's ethos. Ethos is when you bring in an expert to back up what you're saying. You bring in somebody that, you know, think about LeBron James uh, trying to sell a McDonald's sandwich. I saw this on TV the other day. He has nothing to do with McDonald's or food. He's a basketball player, but for some reason we trust him. This is ethos, and we put our faith in somebody else. Now those are ads. That's an easy way to figure it out. But sometimes people try to persuade you with brochures and textbooks and articles. That's where you need to be careful. So how do you figure it out? Well, you want to look at the text structure. How is it set up? So, if it's designed to describe, if it uses many details, characteristics, that's probably designed to entertain or maybe to inform if they want to bring you into the world of the story or if they really want to let you know what happens. If they're putting things in sequence, first, next, last, this is also probably to entertain you. Now compare and contrast, this is a little different. If they're using words like however or nevertheless or in addition to, this is probably either to inform or persuade you. It's sometimes tough to tell the difference. A couple other examples, cause and effect, first, then, before, after. Again, this is designed to inform or persuade you. If they're trying to show you why one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, they might be using logos. Of course, they also might just be giving you directions. Problem solution, they might be presenting you what, what is the problem, what is the crisis here, and what is the answer to it. Oftentimes, this is persuasive. They're giving you a hypothetical problem or a real problem, and then they're telling you what they think the solution is. Even if they back it up with some sources, it's persuasion. So those are just a couple of things. Let me just show you again. Description, 
probably entertainment, compare and contrast, inform or persuade, cause and effect, inform or persuade, and then problem solution, that's probably designed just to persuade you. So that's it for week two. We're looking at those three major categories and how we can tell the difference in text. It might seem like it's arbitrary. It might seem like it's something you just do for school, but this can save you a lot of trouble down the road. You don't want to be one of those people that falls for a fake article online and shares it with everybody. Believe me, I've been there. Well, have a great week. Good luck on Unit 2. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you out there.